Hi all, welcome back to my channel. Today is the 2nd of July and I haven't finished a book yet, although there might be another clip later in the day, uh, but I have had a book delivery. So um, I thought I would just put this here because this seems to be where I put my book mail posts. Uh, so the lovely Lauren from She Is Such A Lauren reached 500 su subscribers recently, which is really exciting. And you should definitely go and check Lauren out. I really enjoy her channel. Um, and she did a Q&A and a giveaway to mark that milestone. And I asked a question and I won, which um, really surprised me because I enter quite a few giveaways, especially online, and I never win. And then I got a tweet because I wasn't actually able to watch the live show um, at the time. And so I hadn't seen it. And then she tweeted that I'd won. So that was very exciting. She got in touch with me. Um, she, I sent her the link to my Amazon wishlist so she could see the books that I want to read. And she ordered via um, Waterstones. And it's come really quickly. I think she ordered them. It was over the weekend, like Saturday or Sunday. It's now Thursday. So they've come really fast. Um, so yeah, she did tell me what she's ordered. But I've forgotten. I know one of them. But I just thought I'd open this. And we can have a look. Let's see what she sent me. Oh, yes, did it in one. Right. Is there like a... I have to admit, I haven't ordered books online from Waterstones. So I don't know if there's like a gift note thing. No. Okay. Right, what have we got? Oh yeah. Right, let's start with this one. So first of all, she sent me this a beautiful copy of Oryx and Crake by Margaret Atwood. This is part of the Mad Adam trilogy, which comes a bit later. I think we'll be reading it later in the year. Um, I've got Oryx and Crake in this edition, um, but I don't have... No, I've got Oryx and Crake because she sent me that. I have um, the next one, can't remember what it's called in this and then I also need to get the Mad Adam because I've got hardback of that but anyway I really like these editions they don't do the Mad Adam trilogy in the other style of books I've been collecting for Atwood but these are really cool I mean look how bright and bold that is and I'm really excited to reread this so thanks very much Lauren and then she also sent me Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nagan hopefully I've said that correctly this is one of those books where I've heard loads and loads of people talk about it on booktube and I was just kind of intrigued by it again, that cover's beautiful. And it's something to do with each year, eight beautiful girls are chosen as paper girls to serve the king. It's the highest hon honour they could hope for and the most demeaning. This year there's a ninth, but instead of paper, she's made of fire. So, yes. Don't know much about it, other than I've heard loads of people rave about it, so I'm excited to get to that soon. And then the one that I'm most excited about is With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo, hopefully, again I've said that right. Um, this is about a teenage girl, I think, who, yeah, so she's a 17 year old with a two year old and she's basically going through high school and she wants to be a chef. And I'm really interested in this because, firstly, I've heard loads about the author, but also because it's about food and I love books that have got food in them. So I'm really excited for this. Hopefully I will. Well, my June, my July TBR is pretty rammed, but if I don't read this in July, I will definitely, definitely read it in August. So yeah, those are the books that Lauren very kindly sent me. Thank you so much, Lauren. I am really excited to get stuck in. It's still the 2nd of July and I have come out to do the food shop, so I thought I would take advantage of a different background. Because uh, I also, whilst I was doing the food shop, was listening to um, an audiobook which I finished, which is All Boy Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson. Um, which I've listened to via Scribed and would really recommend. Uh, Jessie from Bowties and Books has been raving about this book for ages and I finally picked it up, saw it on Scribed and picked it up. Um, I'm not sure of the author's pronouns. Um, I've had a look on their social media accounts and I can't see them. So for the purposes of this review, I will just say they, them, because I don't want to accidentally misgender anybody. Uh, so this is their memoir, basically. Um, of what it's like to grow up queer and black in America and their experience of that and it's absolutely beautifully written it's it's I've read quite a lot of like memoirs and autobiographies and that kind of thing and this is just so beautifully written like this person can really really write and I will read anything else that they put out um, I need to put a content warning in for sexual assault um, so just be aware of that but it's basically the story of, of how they grew up 
and the family they grew up in and going to university or college as they call it in the states and them learning about their gender and their sexuality and what it like i said what it's like to be black and queer in america um the author is actually the same age as me and the things that they've gone through in their life to get up to where they are is a lot um oh, i also need to put a content warning as well for death of a family member so um yeah i would really highly recommend it it's definitely it's an easy five stars especially if you listen to it on audiobook because the author also narrates it which i'd really recommend i love listening to um non-fiction when the or the author is narrating because it feels like a friend is telling you their story and it very much felt like that i've also been following them on twitter um and been really enjoying that so yeah five stars all round. thank you to jesse for continually banging the drum for this book and finally getting to me to pick it up and if you see it grab it because it's a cracker it's the 9th of july and i should have realized i still haven't finished another book yet this month i am feeling quite slumpy right now um i think it's a combination of I'm really tired, as you can probably see, um, and also having such a rigid reading list to read for uni, because now you guys know about that, because that video went up yesterday. Um, I think that's just kind of conspiring to make me feel a bit slumpy. I'm not like really excited about what I need to read this month, um, and I hate feeling quite so constricted, but I will just keep reading a little bit every day and I'm sure eventually the slumpy feeling will pass but I do have three things to talk about. First of all this arrived yesterday, this is White Rage by Carol Anderson. I ordered this quite a few weeks ago but it went out of stock on Amazon because so many people were ordering it which is great uh, but it finally arrived yesterday. This is non-fiction um, and it's all about uh, racism and it's focused I think in America. Um, I read so you no longer know why I no longer speak, why, well, sorry words why i'm no longer talking to white people about race by rennie edo lodge um, at the start of the year which is about british racism um and found that really impactful so i'm hoping that this will be the same i've heard quite a few people talk about it i've heard it's quite dense um and academic so i'm going to read this a little bit at a time i'm not sure if you'll see this in this wrap up which is why i thought i would show it that i'm reading it um because not sure whether or not I'll finish it this month but I am going to start reading this today and we'll see how we go and then I've just had two Amazon deliveries let's try not to show my address so two parcels have come for me and I don't think I've ordered anything but let's find out together what this is because it feels bookish and I don't think I've got any other books on order oh yes off in one okay Oh my goodness, who is this from? Leanne and Helen, you naughty people, sending something, something beautiful when the world is a little bit grey, sending you all of our love, Leanne and Helen. I am stunned, I only put this on my wish list yesterday, I saw Mary from Mary Monk Stories talking through her classics collection, oh my god it's stunning, and I put some of these editions on my wish list because they're absolutely gorgeous. I mean, look at this, just look at the spine. And this is um hardback, obviously, but it's also interactive. So it's got like bits like that. Oh, Leanne and Helen, thank you. That is, I'm genuinely gobsmacked. That is absolutely gorgeous. Wow, thank you. <laughs> okay, so that was from Leanne and Helen. So let's see what this one is. <laughs> oh, this is also from Leanne and, Ella, and Helen. Sweeties make everything better. They are not wrong. Oh yes, I've had this before. It's um, pick a mix. It's so good. It's so good. Let's get it out of this plastic bag so I can show you properly. It's like one minute. Oh my god, just the smell. Look at that. Well, I have been thoroughly spoiled by my friends. I do not deserve it, but um. Thank you so much ladies, you have made my day. It's the 10th of July and I actually finished a book last night. Pause for applause. 
pause for applause I know right um, I've actually been reading this book since last month but because I'm feeling slumpy with my reading like I said in my last clip it's just taken a while but I did thoroughly enjoy it however and that book is The Binding by Bridget Collins look at this glorious cover I was very kindly gifted this by Tracy from Tracy's Year in Books she's on Bookstagram so I will link her below um, I included this on my mid-year freak out tag because even though I was only part way through it it's definitely the most stunning looking book that I've received this year and I mean just just drink that in for a second um also when you take the dust jacket off just in case you haven't seen that video look how stunning this is and these end pages are just I just so this is historical fiction sort of but it's also sort of fancy so I'm having a weird fringe moment today we're just going to ignore that um but it's also sort of fantasy because it's like an alternative history so um we're in a world that's exactly the same as ours but people's memories can be bound into books and once that person's been bound they forget the memories um and we basically follow a young boy who becomes an apprentice to a binder that lives nearby him um and it's about him and I can't really say anything more except it, like it, because of spoilers um I've given this four out of five stars I really enjoyed it the writing was brilliant this is um Bridget Collins first adult book I think she's written some YA before but this is her first adult one and I will definitely read more of her adult stuff as it comes out I think there's a book coming out um Gavin mentioned a book that's coming out I think at the end of the year like November time so I will definitely pick that up especially if it's as gorgeous looking as this because seriously I'm such a sucker for a good cover um so this one um yeah I did really enjoy it gave it four stars I didn't give it five stars because I felt like there was a perspective change three quarters of the way through and it felt really pointless and it just completely for me threw the rhythm of the book off and it left me with some questions that I wanted answered that I didn't get and the ending also felt really abrupt um so I couldn't give it five stars, but I did thoroughly enjoy it. Gave it four stars. It does have a male male romance in it that I really liked. Um, I need to give a content warning for rape, sexual assault, and suicide. So it's definitely adult. It's not YA. Um, just be aware of those content warnings going in. But if you are into historical fiction, and if you're into fantasy, because the binding element is is pretty fantastical, obviously magical, I would really recommend this. And just just look how pretty. It's the 11th of July and today we're actually going out for our first non-essential trip out of the house since March. Um, we've been very much continuing to follow the strict lockdown rules um, and it's not like we're going to the pub or a crowded um, shopping centre or anything today. We're going to go, there's a, there's a lake that's not far from us so we're going to drive over there today, go for a little walk and have a picnic and I'm so excited to get out of the house and go somewhere different. So even though we're just going for a picnic, the three of us, I have actually made quite an effort with my appearance. I have blow dried my hair, put a bit of makeup on, I'm wearing these new earrings um, which are from Wizard Kitch on Etsy who I will link in the description because I ordered those last week and I'm so happy with them. Um, and I was gifted two books yesterday by my beautiful friends. Uh, I actually forgot, to, I didn't open them on camera, as you'll see from this clip, uh, because I was expecting a couple of things that I've ordered. So I just opened them and then realised that they were gifts. So first of all, my, my beautiful friend Simone, uh, from me, Simone and I, sent me Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo, which I'm really excited about. Um, and she also sent me some lint chocolates, which are downstairs and I can't lie. Half of them are already missing. Uh, yeah, so I'm really excited to read this. This is about two sisters, I think, who don't know that they're sisters until their dad dies in a plane crash, and then they have to deal with their grief and also um, the knowledge that he had two families. And I'm not sure if this is told in verse, because I know, she yeah, it is, it's told in verse. So that'll be my first novel in verse form, so I'm really excited for that, so that was exciting. And then <laughs> my beautiful friend Charlotte from Books and Bargains sent me, what's it called? The Ice Maid's Tale by Mandy Morton, which is a book I've never heard of before, and it really confused me because it arrived without a note, um, but this wasn't on my wish list, so it was clearly like one of my friends who's got my address. Uh, so I had to like send around a little flurry of text being like, did you send me a book? And it was Charlotte. So she sent me this. It's been a bit of a rough week. So she sent me this to cheer me up. And apparently it's Handmaid's Tale, but with cats. Um, yeah. 
I think it's it's supposed to be just obviously a spoof and a comedy. And actually, I was looking at my shelves the other day, I don't have any comedy books on my shelves right now. So this is very well timed. So yeah, it's um it's been I've been spoilt by my friends this week. And thank you very much. It's the 13th of July and I'm just about to start another working week but before I do that I want to talk to you about the book I finished yesterday which was Cat's Eye by Margaret Atwood. This is the read for what the book club read for July, obviously this month. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed this. This is the first of the longer Atwoods so that was a relief. I have read it before but I couldn't remember anything about it and the last one that I couldn't really remember very well um, was a book that I didn't really enjoy so I was a little bit nervous. This is literary fiction. Um, and in it we are following an artist as she goes back to Toronto for um, a retrospective of all of her work and it's basically just her life story and it's a weird one for me because it's very much a character study it's quite slow, there's not a lot of action um, so for me usually that would be something I wouldn't enjoy but there's something about the writing that I just absolutely loved and I was really connected to the character and I just was really hooked on it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I need to give a load of content warnings um, because most of this book deals with her childhood friendship, sort of frenemy relationship with a girl called Cordelia. So I need to give a content warning for bullying, gaslighting and self-harm um, and also a suicide attempt and also a death of a family member. So just be aware of that going in. It is quite tough reading in places. Um, but yeah, for me, this is my favourite one so far, next to The Handmaid's Tale. I sort of knew that after The Handmaid's Tale is when I prefer Atwood's writing. I prefer her later writing um, to her earlier stuff. So I knew that would probably happen. I didn't expect Cat's Eye to be so in as enjoyable as it was. But yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And what a relief that is. <laughs> I get a lot of questions about how I keep my reading organised and this is it, this is my plan for the rest of the month. I've got a lot to fit in because of uni reading, so and I've also got two buddy reads um, at the moment I'm buddy reading Daisy Jones and the Six with Simone and Leanne and then at the end, next week I'm reading All the Places I've Cried in Public by Holly Bourne with um, Nicole. So yeah, this is how I'm keeping organised and I know how many pages I need to read a day of certain things to get through or acts if it's a play. And then this is what I'm reading each day. So today I've already read my pages for Daisy Jones. I need to finish Romeo and Juliet and finish Where the Wild World Turns Wild. And and then this is the plan for the rest of the fortnight. And I've got a little bit of space here at the end of the month, so I might be able to fit something else in. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you will see that this has been successful. It's the 17th of July and I have just finished reread of Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare. It's in that big bind-up volume that I showed you last month. I'm not going to hold it up here because... I'm holding you rather than putting you on the tripod and that thing is too heavy. Uh, yeah, this is obviously part of the curriculum. Um, it's a play I haven't read for quite a while and I always forget how much I love it. It's so poetic and I think it's an ideal one. If you've never read Shakespeare, I think it's an ideal place to start. The language is, is easy to follow. Um, everyone knows the story of Romeo and Juliet so you have an idea of what's happening and yeah it's full of fights and action and obviously it's got a love story in it and yeah I just really enjoyed it. It's always a five star read for me, I always have a wonderful time. Um, obviously content warning for suicide and yeah I'm really excited to teach this one. I'm really excited to see what I could do with it so it was a good time. It's still the 17th of July, I'm at the end of a very long working week, but I have just finished the most beautiful middle grade, and it's Where the World Turns Wild by Nicola Penfold. Did I say that right? Yes, Penfold. Um, this was lent to me by Charlie, who, uh, it was his school read that, that it, in his classroom, he's in year 10, uh, he's 10, so he's in year 5, um, his teacher reads one chapter a day of a book to all of them every day and this was their class book and because of lockdown obviously she couldn't read to them every day so we bought a copy and the boys have been reading it, it took them quite a while to read which is fine um, and Charlie passed it over to me at the end of the month uh, last month and said it's five stars I love it he really enjoyed it so I thought okay I'll give it a little go and wow it's so good I would really highly recommend it it's a five star from me as well so we're in a world where 
there has been a pandemic, so just be aware of that going in, um, in which there's been a disease that's been spread by ticks and like most of the populations died and those that were left, this was 50 years before the events of this book, and those that were left have sort of retreated into the cities and sealed themselves in and anything that is natural or wild is completely banned. So there's no wild animals, there's no trees, um, everyone is very contained and controlled. So it's basically like a middle grade dystopian. Um, and then we've got Juniper and Bear who were two kids um, who were born out in the wild uh, because some people rebelled and went into the wild and some people had immunity from the ticks. So they were born in the wild and then their mother dropped them back to the city when they were babies and they've been growing up with their grandmother. Um, and basically they decide to go and find their parents and it's their adventure going back into the world and everything that happens to them. And it's just so beautiful. It's also a debut, which just is shocking that somebody could be this skilled straight away. Um, there's nothing else listed on her Goodreads page at the moment, but I am definitely gonna be keeping an eye out for more from this author. It's absolutely beautiful. It's got such an important message about um, the way we treat the planet and uh, friendship and looking after each other and family. Um, I got me a bit choked up towards the end. Um, I just thought it was so beautifully, beautifully done. And uh, yeah, it's really caught me by surprise, this, this beautiful little book. So yeah, five stars, highly recommend it. It's the 20th of July, and yesterday I finished two very different books with which I had two very different reading experiences. So the first book I finished was Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I was very kindly gifted this copy by the lovely Simone from Me, Simone and I last month. And I actually body read this with Simone and also our wonderful friend Leanne from Literary Diversions. Um, I read with Simone and I've read with Leanne, but this was the first time the three of us, and they've read together, but this was the first time they've read, uh, we've read as a as a group and it was really fun to body read this with them and to get their perspective on it. I think it's a really good book for a buddy read because there's so much going on and there's so many different ways it could go um, and we had a really good time like you know talking about different conspiracy theories and ways we thought it might go. So in case you don't know this um, is a book that's set in the 70s in America and it's based around the band Daisy Jones and the Six and the whole thing is told in transcript format so the band are being interviewed by somebody um and it's all about their rise to fame how they got together their rise to fame and then why the band broke up and i just thoroughly enjoyed it i've given it five stars it's a very quick easy read um because of the format that it's in i could probably we read this over a week but i could probably read this in like maybe one or two goes if i was on my own um but what i really liked is on the surf i thought it was going to be a fairly straightforward story um, which was dumb of me because I love um, Evelyn Hugo which is Taylor Jenkins Reid's other like she's written some other stuff as well but that's the other one that she's really famous for and it's the only one of hers that I've read and that you think is going to be one thing and it's really something completely different and I felt like this was like that in that you think you know where it's going to go before you even start and even as you're reading you think it's going to go in a certain direction and it just completely exceeded my expectations it's about friendship it's about addiction it's about motherhood it's about the different ways to be a mother it's about not being a mother um which is something that really resonated with me and yeah it's just a really good time um there are so many references to real life bands and people in this but also as she did with Evelyn Hugo like somehow the author makes you feel like this fictional band are real people like i wanted to go and listen to the music i wanted to like look up their wikipedia pages um she somehow manages to build an entire world with very little description because most of it is just them talking and that is real skill in writing and i think that's ultimately why i gave it five stars it didn't do the cliche things i thought it was going to and it's real skill to be able to build the world that well with no prose uh, so yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed this one, would really recommend it. Content warning, warnings for drug misuse, drug abuse, um, addiction, alcohol abuse, um, anything else? 
and abortion. So just be aware of those going in. Um, but if you're okay with those content warnings, I'd highly recommend it. I think it'd be great to read like by the pool this summer. And yeah, also I love this edition. I think it's a bit of a Marmite edition. I've seen some people love it and some people hate it, but I think it's really cool. There's just something about it that's very aesthetically pleasing. So that was that book. And then I also finished yesterday, Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. Um, this is part of the curriculum and so I have to read it. And I have to admit, if it wasn't on the curriculum, I probably would never have picked it up. Um, I When I initially finished this last night, I gave it four stars, but I'm gonna drop it down to three. I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. Um, but because of the time in which it was written, it's really overwritten because this was serialized in a newspaper. So every, I think every week or whatever, um, a new chapter would appear. Uh, and Dickens was paid, as most writers were at that time, either by um, per word or per page. And that means that he just describes things in minute detail, which is fair enough, I would be the same if I was being paid by the word. Um, but the pace in this was so slow. And for me, I really struggled with that. I really did struggle with it. I feel like if you're okay with like a slow paced character study, this would be a, a classic to try. But for me, I really found it quite hard work. However, there were sections of it that I really enjoyed. And it was nice to find, to actually read a classic that I've heard so much about. I've seen a couple of adaptations as well, but there is nothing like reading the original source material. Um, so I am glad I've read it. Obviously at some point I'll probably have to teach it. Um, and there were some really interesting conversations around um, class and people's snobbery and growing up and finding yourself and also the role of women. I think there are four or five female characters in this and they all play really different roles and they're all doing very different things. And I just found that really interesting. Um, Miss Havisham is also one of the most interesting characters I've ever come across, I think. I found her really fascinating. But I think for me, just because the pace was slow, it really dragged for me and it felt like it took me ages to finish. So, not my favourite classic, but I'm glad I got it done. And, you know, a three star is not a bad rating for me. Hi. I'm just chilling in the hammock. <laughs> It's the 24th of July and I have just finished The Places I Cried in Public by Holly Bourne. I was buddy reading this with my lovely friend Nicole from A Beautiful Chaos of Books. Really enjoyed reading with her. Uh, we haven't read together for a while and it's always such a good time because we always have a good chat. And yeah, thoroughly enjoyed the buddy read. I was also gifted this by my other lovely friend, um, Charlotte from uh, Books and Bargains. So thank you Charlotte because I finally got around to reading this. So this book, oh boy. Um, it's a YA contemporary about a girl called Amelie who um, has to move from Sheffield down, I don't even know if we know specifically where it is, but somewhere down south, just outside London, um, when her dad loses his job so they have to relocate and she starts at college and she meets a boy called Reese, and it's about their relationship and you know from the start that they've broken up because she is going back to all of the places where she cried during their relationship and... This has really cut me quite deeply. Um, what, one thing I really love about it is on the back, it says, contains material that some readers may find distressing. And then there's an even better content warning in here. So it says, the place I've cried in public is a work of fiction, but it deals with many real issues, including controlling behavior and sexual assault. Links to advice and support can be found at the back of this book, which I thought was really, really well done. I've given this five stars, uh, but like I said, it's it's really like got me this one. Um, this deals with an abusive relationship. It deals with gaslighting. Um, I also need to give content warning, obviously, for gaslighting and abuse, but also for rape and sexual assault. I feel like it's handled really, really well. Um, it's very honest and it's very direct, and I feel like. I feel like young people should be reading this book as much as possible because it shows what a very very unhealthy relationship looks like but what I do also like is there's another character in this which balances it out because it shows what a, a good relationship looks like and I feel like that's really important 
Um, and yeah, I just think this was really well done. I think this is now my second favourite Holly Bourne behind Am and All Yet, which is probably going to always be my favourite Holly Bourne book. Um, but yeah, I felt like this was really, really well handled. It's very powerful. Please be careful picking it up though, because those, like I said, I've given the content warnings and it does not hold back. So just be careful going in. But yeah, definite five star from me. It's still the 24th of July and I've just finished The Tempest by William Shakespeare, which was my second um, Shakespeare reread of the month for my PGCE. And I didn't love it. It is one that I've read before, but it's not one that I've ever studied. Because um, I did much do about nothing instead at school. And I don't know if it's because I haven't studied it, but I just kind of, I struggled actually to, to follow it and kind of keep up with what was going on. Um, I think I need to find an adaptation to watch. I think that'd be more successful for me. Um, but it's basically set on an island. Um, we've got um, three different sets of people who've kind of been split up on the island. And it's about, re it's about revenge and family. And that's all I can really tell you about it. Yeah, it wasn't my favourite one. I've given it three stars. Because, um, you know, it's still Shakespeare. But, yeah. Slightly struggled with this one. Which not to sound arrogant, was slightly unexpected. It's the 27th of July and I am in my office but I'm not actually working today because <sighs> I have to do a speed awareness course this morning. I got a speeding ticket in February and then because of Covid the speed awareness course got pushed back and pushed back and now I'm doing it online. Um, so yeah, I've never done one before. Um, I've never had to do one before. I was horrified to get the ticket it's not something I'm proud of um I was doing 32 in what I thought was a 30 and it turned out to be a very well signposted 20 so that was annoying um so yeah having to do that today so I'm just waiting to log on to the course um but on the upside I have got to hang out with Charlie this morning so we've had a really fun morning um which is why I also look like this uh because it's chucking it down so that's extra fun trying to entertain a 10 year old when it's throwing it down outside but we've had a really nice morning and now like I said I'm just waiting I've just got my laptop up here I'm just waiting for the course to start but whilst I wait for that I want to talk about two books I finished over the weekend the first one of those was The Diviners by Libba Bray so I read Beauty Queens by Libba Bray last year via audiobook because Nicole just wouldn't stop talking about it um, and I think also Harriet enjoyed it as well, so I was like, okay, I'm going to give this a go. Absolutely loved it, would really, really recommend that. And I would also really recommend the audiobook in particular. Gave it five stars. And then Chloe from Chloe Reads Books has started a book club called Sisters Approximately um, with a friend of hers. And she tweeted that this was going to be the July book. And I was like, oh, I want to read some more Libra Bray. So I thought I'd give it a go. Ordered it, didn't realise it's over 500 pages. It's a chunk. But I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a definite five star read for me. Um, so we're in 1920s New York. Um, so we are in between World War One and World War Two. We're following a girl called Evie who's 17 and she gets sent to New York in disgrace. Um, from I think she's from Ohio, from a small town. Um, and her parents send her to New York to live with her uncle for a while because they basically, she's just too wild and they can't like look after her anymore. So she goes to New York and she's really excited by this and she's looking forward to parties and it's during prohibition. So she's looking forward to like going to like, is it called speakeasies? And like underground clubs and stuff like that. So she arrives in New York and her uncle runs a museum for the occult and then a series of really gruesome murders start and it goes from there and I really really liked it. I really fell in love with Evie. Um, she's not an easy character to like at the start she's very selfish and she does things her own way but she's also so fun and impulsive and actually by the time you get to the end you do realize she's got a massive heart and she's just a really lovely character there's quite a big cast of characters and there's a lot of like side stories and side plots but it all like weaves together really well um and like comes together at the end and uh, this is the first i think there's four in the series so far i am definitely going to be reading the next one um because it was just so, so fun. Um, it was also really, it was a lot darker than I was expecting. Um, the murders in this are gruesome. Like it's almost at a Karen Slaughter level of gross, uh, of like visceral. Um, but I thought it was handled really well. Uh, we've also got um, some black rep in this. Obviously I'm not black so I can't speak to her because that is in Libra Bray as a white woman. Um, but there's some of that in. There's also uh, gay rep in this. 
and I just feel like she brought New York in 1920s alive so well and like all the different facets of it we've got wealthy people we've got poorer people uh, we've got highly educated people we've got um, creative people and then there's this like supernatural thread all the way through so yeah I thoroughly enjoyed it gave it five stars I do need to give content warnings um, and I need to put obviously content warnings for murder um, also descriptions of war um, also for abortion, also for rape, domestic violence, and also racism, because there is a couple of sections in this where they are interacting with members of the KKK. So just be aware of that going in. But if you're okay with those content warnings, then I really, I've thoroughly enjoyed reading this. It was such a good ride, like, such, such a fun ride. And I finished it on Friday, so it's a couple of days since I finished it, and I'm still thinking about it. So yeah, definitely five star from me. And then the second book that I finished yesterday was The History Boys by Alan Bennett. Uh, this is part of the reading the curriculum that I'm doing. Um, and this is a play, so it's very short, it's about 150 pages. Um, and it's set in the 80s. Uh, with a bunch of boys who are trying to get into Cambridge and Oxford University and that's pretty much all I can say because it's a play so I don't want to give spoilers. Um, this was easy to read uh, so it wasn't like difficult to decipher. I think as always with plays it's always going to be better if you can see it acted in front of you so I'm going to try and find um, they filmed a version of this because you can probably see it's got some recognisable faces in there as part of the cast I'm going to try and get a DVD version or Netflix or something so I can watch it because I feel like I'd probably get a lot more of it watching it but it was a straightforward read it was interesting uh it's definitely for older teenagers um because it's very much like basically sex drugs and rock and roll um I do need to give a content warning though for sexual assault uh but yeah this was a pretty straightforward read and I need to think about how I might teach it in the future. It's the 28th of July and in an effort to give you a slightly different background, <laughs> I am literally sat in my hallway. Um, I wouldn't normally film here, uh, but I'm running out of places to film in my house. I don't know how people at Daily Vlog are doing it at the moment. Um, yeah, I'm just literally waiting for my computer to load so I can look in for the morning and get on with my day's work. So I've just literally just sat in the hallway. So, hi. Um, I finished two books yesterday. Well, I started one and finished it, but it's only a play, so it was short. And then I finished another book that I've been reading for a few days. So the play that I finished, first of all, was DNA by Dennis Kelly. Again, this is on the curriculum. Um, this is set, I don't think it gives you a date, but it feels, it feels very contemporary England. And basically a group of teenagers have done something really bad and they are covering up. And this sort of looks at the ramifications of what happens to them. Um, it's very short, it's like 70 pages. And I can see why it's on the curriculum because it brings up a lot of really interesting discussion points to chat with teenagers about, about morality and um, like cause and effect and that kind of thing. I didn't love it, but then I'm not the target audience. Um, and I felt like it could have gone a lot further and a lot deeper than it did. The cat's just here, because I'm his food bowl is there, so I am in his way. Hi, he's not interested. You're gonna hear crunching in a second because he's gonna have his breakfast. Uh, yes, yeah, so I can see why it's on the curriculum, but I didn't love it. I gave it three stars. I feel like I've read better plays that deal with this kind of thing. Um, but I'm also inter interested to see, if I end up teaching it, how I do that. So yeah, I, th I started and read that. And then I read a book that punched a hole in my chest and broke my heart. And that was Pigeon English by Stephen Kalman. So this follows a young boy, I think he's from... Ghana, yeah, he's from Ghana. Um, he comes to when we when the book opens, he's been living in London for a while with his mum and his sister. His dad and his other sister are still over in Ghana. Um, and he's eleven, and it's just following his point of view, and it sort of reminded me of the curious curious incident of the dog in the night time because it's very much stream of consciousness, and you're right in his point of view. It's called Harrison, and this was written after the murder of Damalola Taylor. Um, for those who are outside of the UK, he was an 11 year old who was stabbed on his, or murdered on his, his way home from school. Um, and this book opens with our protagonist Harrison seeing a murder scene um, and seeing the blood on the floor after a boy has been murdered. Um, and him and his friend basically decide that they're gonna try and catch the killer. Um, and it follows them and it follows his life and his friends and he gets a girlfriend at school and it follows the family dynamic. And um, what I really liked is that 
he's very innocent um, and so he will see something and explain it to you and he as the character doesn't really understand what he's seeing but you as the reader I was horrified so many times reading this the things that he was seeing and experiencing it was very very powerful and the ending just destroyed me um, so yeah uh, I'm assuming this is for the upper end of the curriculum um, but I think it's got a lot of things to say about gang culture, about how easy it is to get into that situation without really realising what you're signing up to. Um, it talks a lot about being an immigrant. Um, it's not own voices, because um, Stephen Kelman is British, but he did grow up on the kind of estate that's in this book, so it's own voices for that side of it, but not for the immigrant um, rep. Um, and I just found it really really powerful really powerful it was one of those books where like I finished it and I looked up from the book and like normal life was carrying on and I just felt like I'd had my heart ripped out of my chest so um content warning on this for lots of things we've got domestic violence we've got sexual assault murder murder of a child um and gang activity so yeah just be aware of that but if you're looking for a really powerful look at what it's like to grow up um, in this situation then I would really recommend this one but just be careful also I thought this was middle grade and it's really not it's definitely YA um, there's also a lot of swearing in this as well so just be aware of that before you pick it up but yeah I gave it five stars and it absolutely wrecked me it's 29th of July we are back in my room as ever, but I have finished uh, two texts since I spoke to you last. The first of those is The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. The original book is by Mark Haddon and then it's been adapted by Simon Stevens because this is the play edition. Um, I have already read the book of, that this is based on, so I think that probably helped. I absolutely loved reading this play. I've read five plays this month, two Shakespeare and three modern. Um, and this has definitely been the best one um in terms of like enjoying it as a reading experience because the way that it's staged sounds so interesting and of all five including the Shakespeare like this is the one that I'd be the most excited to see um because I think if what the stage directions are saying is how it's put on the st on the on the stage I feel like it'd be really interesting to watch um so in this we're following 15 year old Christopher and the play and the book both start with him finding the dead body of a dog in his neighbour's garden that's been stabbed with a garden fork. Um, and he decides that he's going to try and work out what's happened. Um, at the same time, his mum has also disappeared. So it's about that. Um, it's never explicitly said in the play. I can't remember if it's said in the book or not. Um, but Christopher displays some autistic traits. Um, and... So he has to deal with that as well. And I feel like um, I'm not autistic, so I can't speak to how good the rep is. But in terms of the overstimulation that he feels, um, there is one point where he has to get a train. And I feel like this showed really well because when I've had anxiety and panic attacks before, I know what that feeling is where you get completely overwhelmed by all the noise and the colours and everything that's going on around you. And I felt like that was portrayed really well in this. So yeah, it was really interesting. It was a really good read, just even just reading the play because all the other plays that I've read, it's kind of like, well, I enjoy getting to know the story, but plays are written to be performed and watched rather than just sat down and read. But I feel like this read really well, um, and I've given it five out of five stars because I just thoroughly enjoyed my time reading it. And then the other book that I finished is A Wayland by Ramona Asabel, I think. That's how you say it. Um, so this was recommended to me by Harriet. She did a video, I think in either April or May, where she asked on Twitter for people to tweet her for specific book recommendations um as you guys will know so many of my five star reads in the last two years since i've been watching her channel have been um from harriet so i asked her to recommend me a collection of short stories because i've never really read i think i've read maybe one other collection um and i thought it'd be interesting to try something different so she recommended me this um these are all written by the same author and they all center around the theme of loneliness and they are odd. <laughs> um, I can see why she recommended them to me. And overall, I did enjoy them. There are 11 books in this 
volume. So what I did was, um, is I marked each book out of five once, uh, each story out of five once I finished reading it and then averaged it out. And it came out with an average of 3.6, I think, but I don't do half or partial stars. So I've given it a three star overall. There were two, um, that I gave five star that I really, really liked, which happened to the first two in the collection. Um, and then there were two further on in the collection that I actually DNF'd because I got a little bit bored. Um, but I did enjoy this. It's shown me that I do like short story collections as a format. I definitely prefer short stories to be short. Like the ones that I preferred in here were like less than 10 pages. And the two that I DNF'd were sort of like 20 pages. Um, so for me, if it's going to be short, it needs to be short. I think is what I've learned from this. Um, but if you can recommend me any other short story collections in the comments, I would love to check them out. And yeah, I had a really good time reading this. So thank you, Harriet, for the recommendation. It was a good one. Okay, so I showed you this, well, a couple of weeks ago for me, a few clips ago for you, um, and as you can see, I have completed it. So this definitely wouldn't work for everybody because it's very rigid, but it really helped me because I could then relax because I knew how much I needed to read of each thing to get it done. And it's done, it's the 29th today, so I've still got two days. Um, I've got one other book on the go, which hopefully you'll see me talk about in the next clip, fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, this is proper nerdy, but it worked, and I got to colour it in. Bonus! It's still the 29th of July, and as you can see from my background, I am doing the food shop. Um, I've just finished. So, uh, whilst I was shopping, I was listening to Eliza and Her Monsters, Monsters by Francis Zappia um, on audiobook. And this follows a girl called Eliza, who writes a webcomic and it's massive, it's got millions of followers, but nobody knows that she is the author. Uh, and then her biggest fan starts at her high school and it goes from there. Um, I've given it a four out of five. I did enjoy it. I didn't love it as much as I was hoping to, but I do think it suffered because it's, it's a YA contemporary, but it's focusing on mental health. And I feel like I've read so much of that recently that I don't think this quite had the impact that it could have done. So that's, that's not the book's fault, that's mine. I did enjoy how it was done. I really liked the central relationship, I liked the way that mental health was looked at and dealt with, I liked how honest it was, um, there's good, really good rep for anxiety um, and panic attacks and depression. Um, there's also, I need to give a content warning for suicide and suicidal thoughts. Um, yeah, I just thought the whole thing was really well done, she felt very real, Eliza, and she's um, really creative and she's interesting but she's also really selfish and the way she speaks to her mum sometimes now being an adult I was like oh that's not okay but it's very realistic that kind of mother-daughter teenage relationship um so yeah it's definitely worth a read or a listen if you're going via audiobook I very much enjoyed it and that's another one off the list it's the 30th of July, we're doing yet another <laughs> angle in this room. Um, hopefully August's wrap up will have some more interesting backgrounds for you because I won't be uh, permanently stuck at my desk. But I did finish another book last night, which was The Daughters of the Lake by Wendy Webb. Um, this was very kindly gifted to me a couple of months ago by a book, book fiend named Mel, who I will link in the description. Um, she sent this to me, it was on my wish list, and I was really excited to receive it. Um, and as I've now finished my kind of set TBR for the month, I thought I would pick it up. And I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. First of all, the cover, it's a great cover. But then, because I took his hardback, so I took the dust sheet off to read it. And look at this naked hardback. Like, it's just glorious. So this is kind of a weird one to explain to you guys because it's sort of a historical fiction mystery supernatural romance um so in present day there's a woman called kate and she's been having dreams about this woman um over a period of weeks and then the woman that she's been having dreams of is pulled uh dead out of the lake near where kate lives and wrapped in the woman's nightgown is also the body of a newborn baby um and kate recognizes her straight away and she's then trying to work out who this woman is, why she's in her dreams, and we then go back in time um, to the woman from the lake and we get her life story and how she ended up dead in the lake. Um, 
I didn't really know what to expect. I thought this was going to be more of a thriller. It's definitely not. It's more of a mystery. But there is something so beautiful and captivating about the writing that I couldn't give any less than five stars. I got really hooked in. Um, I finished it last night, so it's been about 12 hours since I finished it, and I'm still thinking about it. And I didn't want it to be over. I actually read the ending really slowly because I didn't want it to be finished. I didn't want to leave those characters. And it's really beautifully interwoven. Um, and there's some very creepy bits of this um and very tense and then there's also a couple of love stories in it that I was just completely invested in and I was just really fascinated by these women and their story so yeah definite five out of five um content warnings for um miscarriage death of a baby um murder what else I think that was it for content warnings uh, yeah, I think that's it for content warnings. But yeah, I would really, really recommend this if you can handle those warnings. And yes, thank you so much, Mel, for sending this to me. I really, really enjoyed it. And it was also one of those things that I love is, is a surprise five star. So it's always good when you go into a book with high expectations and it meets those. But I actually prefer it when you pick up a book at random and it surprises you. So yeah, this for me was a definite good surprise. So thank you so much, Mel. I had a lovely time. It's 31st of July and it's about 5,000 degrees outside, so if it looks like I'm wearing a vest top, it's because I'm wearing a vest top. <laughs> it's so hot in my room um, and I'm trying not to melt, so I've got everything open, so if you can hear my neighbours screaming at each other, I do apologise. And we've got a bit of a messy background. It's the usual, like, messy, chaotic vibe that you're used to from me. However, I've had a really, really exciting delivery um, from Book Break. So I, Book Break reached out to me. Uh, a couple of weeks ago they are part of Pan Macmillan to ask if I wanted to be I think they call it a book insider um which is where they basically ask people in the book community if they want um books to review and I was like yes and there was one book in particular that I really wanted and they have sent it to me I've already opened this so you don't have to watch me struggle because it was very well sealed but let's have a look at this guy I haven't looked at this yet oh yes okay Okay, so that's just the Pan Macmillan thing. Look at this. So this is the Sin Eater by Megan Campisi, and it is gorgeous. It's already out. I think it came out at the couple, maybe last week, a couple of weeks ago. Um, and I have wanted to read this so badly. I'm going to read this like literally straight away. Look at this cover. Um, so it's historical fiction. Oh, nice. Of a naked hardback. It's a lovely colour. Um, oh my god, the end papers! I'm so excited about this book. So, what's it about? Come on, book reviewer. Uh, so, <laughs> it's basically about a sin eater, which is a real historical thing, um, where people believed that uh, if people ate certain foods, they would get rid of certain sins, and if you did something that deserved punishment, um, you would have to eat the sins of other people. And this is centred around a sin eater who then think there's a murder um and she's trying to solve it but also because she's a sin eater nobody's allowed to talk to her and she's not allowed to talk to anybody else so i'm so intrigued i've never read a book by this author is this a debut yes it is it's a debut novel as well and i'm so excited a that i've been sent a free book from a publisher it's very it's my first one so i'm very excited about it and two that it's this book because i am i'm so up for this book and it's the 1st of August, and last night, just before I went to bed, I finished my final book of the month, which was The Method by Shannon Kirk. This was finally very kindly gifted to me by Cover Books, who I will link um, in the description. Um, I put this on my list because I saw a few people had given it five stars. It's a thriller, um, and it kind of takes the kidnap trope and turns it on its head, because on the back it says what happens when the victim is just as dangerous as the captors. And I thought it was really interesting because we're following a 16 year old heavily pregnant girl who is kidnapped. Um, well, she's not your, ordin your ordinary 16 year old girl. I really enjoyed the start of this. It was sort of giving me sweet pea vibes because we're following a perspective of someone who, I mean, it's not explicitly said in the book, but she thinks differently to other people um, and she, doesn't have any worries about harming people um, and she's basically put in a situation and instead of panicking she sort of treats it like a maths equation and tries to work out how to get herself out of the situation. Um, so I really like the setup but for me it just didn't work. We also get the point of view of the FBI cop who's trying to find her and the whole thing was just really slow 
um, and she would kind of like spend three pages basically like pontificating and I was just like can we just get on with it um, I also didn't like some of the language I feel like this was published in 2015 and I feel like there were certain things that were said in this book that wouldn't be said now um, the FBI uh, cop or whatever he is has agent has um, a female partner and he the way he speaks about her is really not okay um, because of the way she has some what would be like traditional traditionally masculine traits and he's really rude about her and some of it just made me a bit uncomfortable in terms of that kind of thing so yeah I didn't love this I gave it three stars in the end um and I was a little bit disappointed with it which I hate I also hate that this was the last book I read in the month because I feel like we're finishing this wrap up on a bit of a downer but yeah that was my thoughts on that it was three out of five it was nowhere near as good as it could have been and it was way too slow. I mean, it's over 300 pages. It felt like it should have been a short story just from her point of view. And it, feel like, it feels like the author tried to bulk out by putting in the FBI character and all of these like thought processes from the girl that's been kidnapped. Um, it did have a good t one good twist in it that I didn't see coming, which I liked. But yeah, otherwise, sorry, didn't work for me. So those are all the books that I read in July. So let's do some quick stats. I'm not going to do like really detailed stats because I think they're a bit boring. <laughs> but I read 18 books, which was really good, um, with an average rating of 4.0. So um, I read a lot and I enjoyed what I read. So that was really good. I feel like July has been a bit of a weird month. As you've seen from the start of this video, I was feeling very slumpy to start with. And I was really having to like push myself to read. But... I sort of knew that would happen because I had a lot of set reading to do for uni and that's always happened to me. I always feel slumpy if there's something that I have to read. Um, but using my little like reading plan, which I know so so many of you are gonna take the mick out of me for um, using. I know Charlotte has been all month because I've been updating her Charlotte for Books and Bargains. I've been sending her little updates and she's like, you are the world's biggest nerd. But it worked. It pushed me through the books that I needed, needed to read. As you can see from the 4.0 average rating, I enjoyed most of what I read and I got it done. So uh, in terms of page count, I read 5,186 pages. So that's 168 per day, um, which is pretty good. And then I had, out of those 18 books, I had nine five stars. So they were All, the Bo All Boys Aren't Blue, Romeo and Juliet, Where the World Turns Wild, Daisy Jones and the Six, The Places I've Cried in Public, The Diviners, Pigeon English, The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime, and Daughters of the Lake. So yeah, I had a really good reading month. Trying to choose my book of the month has been really hard because All Boys Aren't Blue I loved, particularly on audio because I loved that the author read it themselves. Um, although I do really want a physical copy so that I can go back to it and also so that I can like give it to Charlie when he's older and just I feel like books are easier to share if they're physical um like particularly like my friends and family because I lend out a lot of books to a lot of people so I would really like a book to have that I can lend out to people a copy of it um Romeo and Juliet I always have adored um Where the World Turns Wild was such a surprise um and she's immediately become an author that I will read her next book and um, that was her debut so I, I just absolutely loved it and I've actually sent a copy to my grandma which should be arriving with her today the day I'm filming this because I think she'd like it as well and yeah it was just it was just a really nice I read it because Charlie wanted me to read it which I will always do but what I loved is that I actually thoroughly enjoyed it myself so yeah that was such a beautiful book Daisy Jones and the Six I loved had so much fun reading that as well with um Simone and Leanne Places I've Cried in Public by Holly Bourne I'm going to talk about in a minute. The Diviners I thought I would like, but I didn't think I'd give it five stars. I wouldn't have put it on a five star prediction list. So that was really fun. Pigeon English actually tore my heart out of my chest. Um, I would put that on the same level as um, Goodnight Mr. Tom in terms of this is going to break your heart. Um, yeah, that was a very raw book but I loved it. Curious Incident of the Dog in the Night Time. I also didn't expect to get five stars because it's the play version, but it's just so cleverly done. I could see it in my head and now I really want to see it live one day, hopefully. And Daughters of the Lake was a total surprise five star, which is my favourite kind. But yeah, you can probably tell from what I've just said that my book of the month is going to be The Places I Cried in Public by Holly Bourne, because as you saw in the clip for it, it's just so on the nose. Um, I've read a few books that have gaslighting in them. I feel like this is the most accurate and 
it made me feel things um so yeah this is my book of the month for july so would highly recommend this one and all of the other books that i've given five stars everything that i've talked about will be linked in the description please let me know what your book of the month was for july and i will see you in the next one thanks guys bye